It's the talk of Bikini Bottom, Swatch's brand new collaboration with none other than the oldest watch brand in the world, Blancpain. We've all seen it, but have we seen it all? Here's 10 things you didn't notice about the Blancpain Time Swatch Scuba 50 Fathoms Watch Collaboration thing. Why 50 fathoms? Well, for those of you who left your sea legs at summer camp, a fathom is a nautical unit of measurement that basically means as far as your arms. Reach out left and right and you've got about six feet. A fathom. This meant sailors could dunk a rope down to the seabed and pull it back in again, an arm's width at a time, measuring it as they went. So still, why 50 fathoms? The Blancpain watch was originally created in 1953 to equip military divers using a new piece of diving equipment called the Aqualung, a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or SCUBA. The French Navy's underwater research group determined upon testing, which resulted in the death of diver Maurice Fagu, that 300 feet, or 91 meters, was the safe limit. That's exactly 50 fathoms. You'll recall that the first teaser of the Blancpain Time Swatch Watch was a poster of the five oceans that make up the blue of the blue marble that we all live on. But hang on, I thought there were seven seas, not five. Time to get some facts in you. A sea and an ocean are not the same thing. A sea is typically smaller and usually located where the land and ocean meet. An ocean is much larger and surrounded by continents. In these five oceans, the Arctic, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Antarctic, there live soft-bodied marine gastropod mollusks called nudibranches. They also go by the name sea slug. Each ocean has its own varieties, and it's from those each watch gets its coloration. The Arctic is home to the Dendronotus frondosus in orangey red and beige. The Pacific is where the black, white, and yellow Chromodorus curtiri lives. Glaucus atlanticus in black, white, and blue is to be found in the Atlantic. In green, black, and orange, it's the Indian Ocean's Nembrotha cubiriana. And for the Antarctic, it's the greyish-white Tritoniella belly. Not only does each watch borrow its respective nude branches colour scheme, they also feature an image of the little fellas on the rotor weight of the movement. So this plastic dive watch may be introduced to the little critters that inspired them, but given that Blancpain has made an ocean commitment, hopefully not as landfill. You may have noticed that the orange Arctic Ocean Edition has a radiation symbol on it that, on closer inspection, is actually crossed out, and for clarity, I suppose, although it really only raises more questions, the inscription, no radiations, written underneath it. Well, of course a watch isn't radioactive. It's a watch, not Oppenheimer's desk toy. Well, as it happens, before people knew any better, watch dials were painted with radium. Yes, deadly, deadly radium. Why? Because mixed with a phosphor, it glowed, a necessity for a watch worn deep down in the dark ocean. The use of radium became part of the military specification for dive watches up until the 1960s, when the horrific dangers were better understood. In just a few decades, we went from radium-based cosmetics to a full ban. And so the radium was replaced with much less harmful, but still radioactive, tritium, whose low energy beta particles are incapable of penetrating skin. Pre- and post-ban watches needed to be clearly distinguishable, and so the no radiations dial was created. That's not the first circular emblem to feature on the lower half of a Blancpain dial, however. On the Antarctic Ocean edition of the Swatch collaboration, there's a bisected circle, split horizontally. It's not an emergency Tylenol. In fact, its purpose is far more life and death than that. Bear in mind that the 50 Fathoms was, back in 1953, the very first dive watch made for professional use. Not just below the surface, but deep down, where its services extended beyond simply making sure the divers weren't late to their underwater engagements. Combined with the timing bezel, the watch was used for calculating oxygen usage and decompression stops. If the watch was compromised in any way, then the diver wearing it could be too. To make doubly sure the watches worked properly, the military required two things. One, a running seconds hand to make sure the watch hadn't stopped, and two, a moisture indicator on the dial that would change colour if water had leaked into the watch. 
Most of the Blancpain Time Swatch 50 Fathoms watches wear the dial design that was made available to the general public, with the numbers 3, 6, 9 and 12 in their respective places. But not all of them. Both the Arctic No Radiations and Antarctic Moisture Indicator dials are a different design, one that looks much closer to another dive watch of the 1950s, the Rolex Submariner. Instead of numbers, there's a triangle at 12, rectangles at 3, 6 and 9, and circles everywhere else. This universal design was not only simpler to manufacture, it was also faster to read and easier to orientate. Blancpain offered it as part of its original mil-spec watch, and it went on to become the standardised design for all US mil-spec watches, of which many other manufacturers became suppliers. You'll also notice another little touch. The mil-spec watches not only go without the date, as per the originals, they also get their logos the vintage way, compared to the contemporary logo seen on all the others. You might not be able to get the Blanc Pan Time Swatch 50 Fathoms, but you can definitely pick up some AMW clothing. Shop these and much more below the video, and I'll send you a personal video to say thanks. To give the watch its full title, this isn't just the Blanc Pan Time Swatch 50 Fathoms, but the Blanc Pan Time Swatch Scuba 50 Fathoms. Although Swatch missed out on some great options like System 51 Fathoms and Thrifty Fathoms, not only does the addition of the scuba name make the watch easier to pronounce than Blancpain, it also has history with Swatch. The first self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, Scuba, was pioneered in 1942 during the German occupation of France by Émile Gagnan and Jacques-Yves Cousteau. The big difference to previous diving systems was the ability to self-regulate pressure and deliver air on demand, making it compact and portable, unleashing the opportunity to explore the secrets of the sea. Swatch hasn't been making watches since the 1940s, but it has already made a prominent mark in the history of dive watches. When Swatch first came to be in the 1980s, mechanical watches were at death's door, crushed by the might of Japanese quartz technology. Swatch was the Swiss rebuttal, a fun, colourful watch in quartz that ended up becoming the saviour of the Swiss mechanical industry. Today, Swatch owns watchmakers like Omega, Breguet, Longines, Hamilton, and of course, Blancpain. But before any of those illustrious watchmakers could consider themselves resurrected, Swatch, in 1990, needed to first revive a classic from the ashes, the Dive Watch. The 1990 scuba blended Swatch's fun, colourful aesthetic with the Dive Watch style, bringing it back to the masses. It was the perfect timing, purchasing Blancpain just two years later. If you haven't seen it already, when I tell you, you'll struggle to unsee it. The dirty great big swatch logo on the side of the case. You might think that it's a bit much, vulgar even, to emblazon a logo at such a scale on the side of the 50 fathoms. You might even call it disrespectful. But here's the thing. The Blancpain 50 fathoms, the original $15,000 one, has it too. Sure enough, on the side of the watch, just in case you forget, is the Blancpain logo. It's been there since the 1997 reintroduction of the 50 Fathoms to the Blancpain catalogue, and there it remains. Those aren't the only words you're getting on the Swatch's case. If you're looking for an inspirational phrase or two, the watch has five on the case back for you, in no particular order. Passion for diving, license to explore, ocean breath, protect what you love, and immerse yourself. Can't tell you what they all mean, except that you might have a serious case of ocean breath. The case of the Blanc Pan Time Swatch continues to treat us to tiny little details that nod back to its metal counterpart, some of them functional and some of them less so. Much like the Moon Swatch has its dot over 90, an obscure detail that gives a smile and a wink to diehard collectors, the 50 Fathoms has its drilled lugs. What even is that? Well, it's where the bars that hold on a watch's strap can be accessed from the outside of the lug through a hole drilled all the way through. It was just easier to make them that way rather than drilling them just on the inside. To some collectors, it marks the difference between a watch being built for utility 
and for style, with the absence of drilled lugs a visual upgrade that serves no functional purpose. Less functional are the shallow imprints of the 50 fathoms case back removal slots which would ordinarily mate to a case tool that could unscrew the back. Here they're purely decorative, an ironic counterpoint to the functional drilled lugs. It's 2023 and fidget spinners are no longer the in thing, however that doesn't stop your average dive watch owner from hankering after a good bezel action. Many affordable dive watches pack 60 teeth in their bezel ratchet system, which is designed not just to keep the bezel from loosely turning, but also to keep it from turning the wrong way, a safety system implemented for the first time by Blancpain in the 50 Fathoms. You might imagine the Swatch edition would have a subpar system, but surprisingly it has a full 120 clicks. Even some of the actual Blancpain 50 Fathoms only have 60. Now, you might wonder why you'd need a click between minutes, and yes, it's not exactly a necessity, but it sure does feel satisfying to play with. The man who revived Blancpain, Jean-Claude Beaver, who bought the rights to the name for a mere $22,000, only to sell it to Swatch for $60 million a decade later, once said, Since 1735 there has never been a quartz Blancpain, and there never will be. When every other watchmaker was exploring quartz, Beaver understood the potential of mechanical watches as a luxury, and vowed never to let Blancpain betray its history. Although Beaver has since relinquished control of Blancpain to move on to other projects, the brand has remained true to his sentiment since. Does the Swatch collaboration break that rule with a technicality, equipping this 50 fathoms with the same quartz powertrain from the Moon Swatch? Nope. Instead, it gets Swatch's System 51 caliber, a fully automatic movement introduced in 2013. And by fully automatic, I don't just mean it winds itself. It's also manufactured entirely automatically. There are 51 parts, each one created and assembled by machine. It's regulated by laser when it's built and set in place permanently, so it can't be regulated in future. It also can't be serviced. Inside is a Swatch family favourite, a fully plastic escapement. Similar to the Powermatic 80, it swaps metal, which needs to be lubricated, for a plastic pallet fork and escape wheel. Technically better, perhaps, but not quite so appealing. So while Jean-Claude Beaver's wish to keep the Blancpain name free of quartz has been kept, I'm not quite sure this was what he had in mind. Now you know all about it, what's your take on the Blancpain Time Swatch Scuba 50 Fathoms? Are you going to get one, or would you rather nail your wrist to a board? Let me know down in the comments. Please also like and subscribe, and don't forget to trim your lawn with nail scissors. Goodbye. Still here? Watch this video next.